Ratchet Organized-ish. My name is Leela and I used to be a professional organizer, meaning I went into people's homes and organized it for them and then taught them how to maintain it. And that's exactly what I want to talk with you about today, specifically the kitchen, because the kitchen was one of the rooms that I was hired to organize most often because, let's face it, there's a lot of stuff in kitchens. And so today I want to share with you some of my best tips for organizing your kitchen, decluttering the things inside, and how to kind of keep it this way for real this time. When you're organizing a kitchen, one of my best tips is to divide your kitchen up into zones. That really helps you figure out where everything should be stored and how it should all be grouped together. So I do have a kitchen planner that you can download. I'll put the link down in the description, but basically you're just dividing everything up into three or four main zones. Then you can categorize everything into subcategories, but for the most part, having those zones is going to make cooking easier. It's gonna make putting away dishes easier, and it's just gonna make you feel a little more settled in your kitchen and a little less chaotic. In my own kitchen, I personally have four different zones. This is the food prep zone, and it has our dinner dishes, our utensils, food storage, lunch prep, all of that is in this one place. Next is the cooking zone, and this is where we make all of our meals. So this has all of our pots and pans, our baking dishes, large utensils, and cooking oils. Beside the refrigerator is our beverage area, and this is where we keep all of our cups, mugs, tea, and coffee. And our fourth zone is the food storage zone, and this is our pantry. This is where we keep all of our food, snacks, baking ingredients, spices, and even our microwave is in here. Back when I was organizing for clients in home, one of the things that I always saw were these cabinets that were just overflowing with Tupperware and food storage and lids that had no bottoms and bottoms that had no lids. And it was the thing that I just constantly saw. And my biggest tip for storing Tupperware is to downsize. I promise you, you do not need all of those storage containers. You're not using half of them anyway. Instead of having all of these mismatched containers that you don't know where the lids go to and you don't know which one should be used for what types of food, I recommend just getting one good set of glass containers and one good set of plastic containers to where everything matches. That way you're going to know that all of the lids are going to go together and all of the containers are easy to find and they're going to look nice in the cabinet. If you typically have friends and family over for dinner and you like to send home leftovers, you can always buy cheap containers from Walmart. I think you can get like a pack of 10 for $10 or something and keep those somewhere else in the house just to send home with people. That way you don't have to worry about your good containers coming back to you. You can just tell them to keep them or throw them away or whatever it is they wanna do with it. If your kitchen space allows, having a lunch prep station like this is going to work out really well for you if you have kids that are school age or if you pack your lunch for work. Because having everything all in one place like this, all of your lunch boxes and your bags and even a post-it note and a pen to write cute notes for your kids for school, everything all in that place is going to save you from having to go back and forth throughout your kitchen and run around and try to grab everything. Instead, it's all here in one specific zone. The Tupperware, the bags, the lunch boxes, everything is all in one space. And that's why having zones in your kitchen is so, so important for not only your organization, but also your sanity. The next tip I have for you when you're organizing your kitchen is to adjust your cabinet shelves. For the most part, kitchens have adjustable cabinets, whether they have the pegs in the newer type cabinets, or if you've got a really old house like I do, you might have the little adjustable metal strips. But most cabinets, especially the upper ones, you can adjust those shelves so you can move them higher or lower so what you need is going to fit in there and you're actually going to be able to reach the majority of the shelves. But also, if you only have one shelf in there and that's not enough, you can go to a local cabinet maker and ask them to just make you an extra shelf. You can take your old ones, drop them off, they can make an exact duplicate so you have extra shelves, or you can buy thick plywood if you're handy and you can create them yourself. 
So don't feel stuck with your original cabinet layout from the day that you moved in. Those shelves can be adjusted, they can be duplicated, they can be rearranged, and they can be removed. So you can truly customize your cabinets to fit the exact things that you have and the exact space that you need. One thing you may have noticed in my utensil drawer is there's a few things that might be missing from the traditional flatware set. I for some reason, in my mind, had this revelation when I was remodeling the kitchen that I didn't have to have the full set. Like, I didn't need the salad forks and the dinner forks and the big spoons and the small spoons and two different kinds of knives and steak knives and all of the different serving type things that come with a big nice set. So instead, I bought just the three-piece set from Crate and Barrel, and it was just the spoons, the forks, and the knives. And then I did get steak knives too. But by downsizing and just having regular forks, regular spoons, and regular butter knives, it saved so much space in this drawer, and so I was able to add those knives next to it. I've never been able to keep knives in the same drawer with my silverware because I just didn't have the amount of space. But by reframing my mind and realizing that I don't have to have all of the things that we're supposed to have in a kitchen and instead just having the things that we use on a regular basis, I was able to free up so much room in here. A lot of people feel like their kitchen just isn't big enough to hold all of their things. And honestly, that's kind of true. We all have different kitchen sizes, and when we have a smaller kitchen, the truth is you can't have as much as someone with a larger kitchen has. So when you are trying to organize and declutter your kitchen, my biggest tip is to go through and choose just the things that you use on a regular basis and put all of those back in the kitchen. Take everything else out. Lay it all out on your dining room table. It's probably gonna take up more than the table, but just having only the essentials in your kitchen, just to see how much space they take up, is gonna give you a really good idea of how much extra room you have for the other things, like the fun kitchen gadgets, or the baking things that you use once a year, or less than that. I think you'll really be surprised at how little you actually need in your kitchen and all of those other things sometimes were an impulse buy because you saw someone use them on Instagram and they looked cool and other times they were a single purchase just for one event and you never touched them again. So in those instances, it's really important to look at whether you have the space for it and whether you're actually going to use it again. And if you're not, and you know someone who also has it, then maybe you can kind of have an agreement where you can just share the item. So sometimes they have it, sometimes you have it. It works really well for your parent or your sibling and it saves you from all having to have the same weird kitchen gadget in all of your houses that never gets used except for once or twice a year. Which leads me to the next thing that I constantly saw when I was organizing kitchens for clients, and that was duplicates. You would not believe how many spatulas I found in every single kitchen between spatulas and lemon squeezers and oh my gosh oh garlic press i was in a house that had four garlic press little clampy gadgets and that's not necessary unless you're cooking for a massive massive group of people very often all of those things are just things that we accumulate sometimes we buy multiples because we see a different color that we like or one is starting to wear down and we buy the other, but then we keep that first one just as a backup, just in case. But as you accumulate more and more backups and the just in case items, your kitchen starts to be overflowing with all of these things that you're not using. So if you're looking for an easy way to just declutter your kitchen a little bit without any organizing at all, I highly recommend just starting by removing any duplicates that you don't need anymore. Now it's totally fine to still keep two or three of something if you use them very often, but once you start getting into the fours and fives and sixes and higher than that of duplicates, it is time to start letting things go.
And my final tip is also a really easy thing that you can do on a rainy day or just when you have a short amount of time, and that is adding drawer organizers and dividers and trays. Now it may not seem like much, but just by swapping out that one single utensil tray for divided separate trays or even an expandable organizer that just has a few more extra spaces than what you did have before, you're going to allow yourself to really ultra categorize your drawers and that's going to keep them from overflowing or getting stuck when you try to open them or close them. And by using these dividers, you are able to basically keep yourself accountable because you only have a certain amount of space to store that one type of category in that drawer. So if it starts filling up with duplicates or just random little gadgets, you'll know that it's time to downsize because you can't fit anything else in that section and you don't have another section to spare for that category. Now there's a lot of different types of drawer organizers on the market. You can buy expandable utensil trays and these are like what you put your silverware in, but you can also use them for other types of kitchen items too. There's also separate different types of trays and these are typically in plastic or bamboo and they come in little squares. You've probably seen them in all the Pinterest photos and they're really, really great for organizing a drawer because you can move them around. It's kind of like a Tetris game. If you're finding that when you're trying to organize drawers with these separate trays and you keep ending up with gaps or awkward spaces, my biggest tip is to measure the drawer before you even start buying them. Most of these drawer trays come in increments of three inches. So you're going to find all these trays in things like three inches wide or six inches wide, nine, 12, 15. All of those are in increments of three and that's because this sizing allows you to create squares. So by using these numbers, you can create an actual square with these trays almost every single time. By doing this, you'll know to measure your drawers ahead of time. And if your drawer is 22 inches wide, you can drop that down to 21 inches wide, which is a multiple of three, knowing that you can have either seven of the three inch dividers going through, or you can kind of break that up and just play with it a little bit to see what sizes are going to fit. It really helps if you do this on paper first before you're sitting in the store rearranging trays in the floor. Don't do that. But just knowing that the trays come in multiples of three inches is really, really helpful for deciding how to lay them out in the drawer. And if you do have gaps in the drawer, it's totally fine. It doesn't have to be all the way from end to end of the drawer. A lot of times it's just not possible because of the way the drawers are made. And so by filling in those gaps with really small items or even a larger gap with larger items, like in my utensil drawer, I had one corner where nothing would fit, no type of tray. And so instead of stressing about it, I just put coasters there. We keep the coasters near the table anyway, so instead of having them out on the counter, I just dropped them in the drawer, they filled the gap, and everything was fine. Another type of really great drawer organizer are the expandable dividers. And these are kind of like the old school tension rod curtain rods that you hang up and they go in your drawer. Some of them have a little clamp that you push down and some are just strictly tension, but they go in your drawer from end to end and you can divide up everything inside. The ones that I have have extra little slots so you can put in dividers so you can truly make the drawer completely custom. But even without that, these dividers are really great for even the bigger, deeper drawers that you keep like dishes or pots and pans or something in. Just having that separation allows the drawer to stay organized and at the same time know what is going to go where and keep your categories from getting overfilled with things that don't belong there. I hope this video gave you some new ideas for making your kitchen more functional and I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel so you can get all kinds of other ideas on how to get your home and life more organized-ish.